Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use WordWall for homework. So I've been using WordWall for about two to three weeks now, and I already made one video about how I use WordWall to review at the beginning of class. But I quickly realized I can also use it for homework, for interactive homework. So, and it's really, really great because not only is it beneficial for the student, but it's also beneficial to you with the teacher because you can actually see how well they did on the homework. So I'm going to show you how you can take an activity and turn it into an interactive homework assignment. So first of all, you have all these activities to choose from. I like to make sure my homework activities are measurable. That means it's easy to see right or wrong answers. So like random wheel and open the box, those would not be good homework assignments because I am not in the room with them. I cannot see what they spin and see if they get it correct or incorrect. So I do never use these two for homework. My favorites right now for homework are the quiz. I really like find the match. Uh, the missing word is really good. I don't do a lot of these down here. I do sometimes, but they're a little trickier for homework assignments, for me at least. And match up is good for older students. Group sort is also very good depending on what you are teaching. So I'm going to show you how I can take one of my activities that I've already created and turn it into homework. So I'm gonna to go to my activities and I keep everything organized by level, unit, whatever they're learning. I do use Learnerling and Learnerling is awesome because she actually has homework created for most of her lessons and she will have them created for all except for like the review lessons or the challenge lessons. But sometimes there are some things that a student might need extra help with that might not be a focus in the lesson, so it's not in the created homework. So I might create an extra assignment for that. Or um, after the challenge lesson, maybe if there's something I still need some work on, I might create an extra homework assignment for that. But I also have three students who are still doing VIP Kid AI. So for me, with me, they have private tutoring to supplement their. VIP Kid AI classes. So I do create the word wall homework for all of those students, or at least I started doing that recently. So I'm going to use one of those as an example. So I'm gonna choose my VIP Kid level five, unit nine. So I have four activities here, and I'm just going to pick one to show you how to turn it into a homework assignment. So the passive voice one here, I've already created it. And all I have to do is to go to these three dots and there is a choice to set assignment. You can also find set assignment when you create a lesson. So let's say I just finished making this lesson and I want to immediately send it for homework. Well, there's also set assignment right here. So you can choose it from either spot. So let me go back here to my assignments. I'm gonna click on the three dots again and set assignment. So this page will pop up. You can give it a name. I always just delete that part and I put the student's name here and I'll tell you why in a bit. And then down here, when they open the assignment, you can have them either enter their name or be anonymous. I just teach one student at a time, so I don't really need them to enter their name. That's just an extra step because I'm only sending this to one student. I know who it is when they submit it. So I choose anonymous. But if you're teaching a group class and you're sending it to all of your students, you would want them to enter their name so you know A, who completed it, and B, who answered what correctly or incorrectly. You can set a deadline if you choose, I don't. And then the default at the end of the game is to show answers and start again. I keep this exactly how it is. I like that they can show the answers so they can review it after they're done. They can also review it with their parents and they can choose to do it again. That's also very important. My parents like that they can do it multiple times to get that extra practice, especially if they missed one the first time. The leaderboard would only be beneficial if you're teaching a group. That means they could see how well they did compared to everybody else that completed the assignment. Even if I taught a group, I probably would not do that. I don't want this to be a competition. I just want it to be a fun review for them at home. And then 
I click Start. You will receive a special link just for that activity. So you would copy this and then you would paste it to the parent wherever you communicate with them or wherever you send their homework to. So for me, I would send it on class in because that's where I put all of my homework, but you could also send it to the parent on WeChat. They can complete these on any device. They can do it on their phone, they can do it on a tablet, they can do it on a computer, anywhere. So once I hit copy, I can now go to my results. It will immediately pop up under my results. Of course, it says zero because the student hasn't done it yet. And then for me personally, I like again to be organized. So I create folders for every student. So I'm gonna create a folder for Kendall and then I put them into the correct folder. And the reason I put the name is just so it's easy for me to see which folder to put it in. I might teach four students in one day. I create a bunch of the activities and then at the end, I go put them in the folders. And this way I can easily just see the name, drag it into the folder, and now it's there. Now I'm going to be the student. I'm just going to paste that link into Microsoft Word. So when the student gets the link, they click on it. And since I chose anonymous, all I have to do is hit start. If there was the choice to, if you chose for them to put their name, a box would open for them to type their name first. So now I can start the activity. So I'm going to do this really quick. The books were read by the students. Some activities you have to submit answers, some are automatic. The dog was hit by a car. The meat was cooked by my dad. The picture was painted by the girl. And then I'm going to purposely miss this last one. The cookies was eaten by the children. And I like that they immediately see that they got it incorrect because I can't be there to help them. I can't be there to say, sorry, that's wrong. So it's good that they get that immediate feedback of whether it was right or wrong. So this is where those options were that I selected. Show answers, they can see their score, of course, and the time. When they choose show answers, they can look at every sentence and whether they got it right or wrong. And then of course, I made the option to start again. And I always select when I create activities for that to be random. So when they do it a second time, all the sentences will be the same, but they'll be in a different order. So they can't just memorize the order of their answers. So I'm just going to do it one time here. And I'm gonna exit out, exit out, and then I have to refresh. And now you can see it changed to the number one. That does not mean one student, that just means it was completed one time. So if I did it three different times, it would show a three under on that box. So now let's see what results I get. So I click on this, and this is where it is super valuable for me. Of course, there is no way for me to know whether their parent helped them. I just have to hope the parent didn't. I don't expect the younger students to do everything by themselves, especially reading sentences. They might need the parent to help read it so they can answer the question. But I encourage them to let their child complete it independently if they can. Otherwise, it doesn't really help me. So I can see <clears throat> that one student did it. I can see the score and the fastest time. It's wonderful because I can see a breakdown of everything that they did. So I can see which ones they got correct and incorrect. And I can even see the exact sentences. This is where it's really important. So I don't have to go back to look at the quiz that I made. I can see everything on this page. I can see that they missed the sentence. And that is valuable to me because then I can see what we might need to work on in our next class. I can also see, again, the correct and incorrect and the time. So the time might not seem that important, but it can be a good indicator of how confident they are. If they took two minutes to complete this, even if they got them all correct, that tells me that either A, they had to really sit there and think really hard for each one, or B, they went looking through their notes to try to find how to answer, which means they still are not confident 
in this skill. So the time does help you make a little bit of an indication of how they're doing with this skill. So I love the report that you get, it is great. So now let me go back and show you an example of a student doing it more than once. So this is my student, Justin, and he's really good about doing his homework. <clears throat> and you can see some he completed just one time. That means that tells me if he got them all correct that he was confident and I can look at the time it took him. Did he complete it quickly or did he spend a lot of time on it? But you can see there's two that he did twice, which tells me he wasn't as confident the first time. So let's look at the Johnny Appleseed. So when you click on it, it goes to the best. If they complete it more than once, you're going to want to choose all. So I can see every time he completed it, not just the best time. So now when clicking all, I can see, oh, he missed question four the first time, but he got it correct the second time. And then I can go down and see more detail. So I can see he got it correct once and he got it incorrect once. And I can see each time he took it. Here's the first time he took it, took him a minute, 12 seconds, and he missed Johnny Appleseed, wore a hat on his head, he said true, so he got it wrong. And then of course he took it again and he got it correct. Well, this one's pretty simple. Obviously, I chose true the first time, it must be false. But now what I can do as a teacher, now that I see that he missed that one, I can take this sentence, I can talk about it in our next class, and then we can talk about why the answer was false. So it's not just, oh, he got it right the second time. I can actually use the data that I have here and I can use it to make sure he truly understands why he got it wrong, why the answer was false in our next class. So it is a super valuable tool. So I love, love, love using the homework for WordWall. It's more fun because it's kind of in a game format and it also is beneficial to me and I can use the data to make sure the student truly understands what we are learning in class. So if you use WordWall and you're looking for some more ideas for homework, I highly suggest you trying this out, see how your parents like it, see how the students like it and see how you like it. I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions about the activities and how to use them in WordWall, just let me know. Bye everyone.